Hello! Seeing as you are here and you clicked on this video, I figure you too like to add an element of fantasy and magic to your day-to-day -day life. Well, my friend, it's still too hot in Melbourne to knit right now, but that doesn't mean I'm not planning 1,000 projects that I'm itching to cast on with anticipation for autumn. Thus, I would like to share with you a collection of medieval and fantasy-inspired knitting patterns that can make you feel like you are on a magnificent quest, even if you're just going down the corner to get milk. Quick disclaimer, I cannot speak to the legibility or ease of knitting these patterns since for the most part I haven't knit them myself. I just wanted to share some that looked inspiring to me. So first up is a jumper from one of my favorite knitwear designers and it is the Medieval Ruffle Blouse. I love the cuff and the collar detailing and this is only one of many magical patterns that she offers. Any one of her designs can easily slot into a cottage core, night core, medieval core wardrobe, but I particularly like this one for its unique details. Next up, I think you cannot go wrong with a classic hood, and Robin's new hood was inspired by Swedish archaeological finds dating to the 15th century. I love the added detailing at the hem, and you can always tuck it under a coat if you're feeling a little too conspicuous. The Giselle cardigan feels like something that Eowyn would wear over one of her gowns. It's got a lovely crossover and a little bit of sleeve interest that makes it feel special and a little bit delicate. I feel like it allows for a bit of layering too, so you could make it more of a costume piece with a belt, some pouches, pants, tall boots, and a bodice over the top. I am in love with the giant sleeve version of the Love Magic sweater. I am actually partway through knitting my own version in a cotton linen blend. So far, it's been super easy to knit, but I do, you know, have yet to actually knit the sleeves on this. So we'll see how it goes. Magic is in the name, but these sleeves absolutely scream like dramatic spellcaster to me. The Willow Moon Cowl feels just so elemental to me. I mean, the obvious being earth from the Willow Branch pattern, but in tones of red, it could make it seem absolutely fiery, and blue-greens could give a sense of trickling water. You could even do black with like an eldritch color-shifting wool, and it will seem like it's blasting through darkness. If you are looking for magical patterns that are pretty easy to follow, I encourage you to check out Tiny Owl Knits. I actually started knitting her patterns pretty early on and then found them so quick and easy to follow. I actually own her Woodlands Knits book and I just love the magic that she brings to her patterns. She has hoods and capelets and slippers and just all manner of things that you could easily slip on to make you feel super cute and cozy but also a little bit badass like your D&D &D character or adorable like your D&D &D character. I don't know who you play. The emphasis always feels like they're on magical cozy things as well, so it seems like the perfect thing to put on when you're just having a chill night around the table. Now, I'll be honest, I tried knitting the Azure Dragon pattern a few years ago and it just confused me. I feel like I may have been trying to adapt it at the same time though, which is probably where I went wrong, but I am keen to give it another go. It's such a beautiful knitted version of Dragon Scales, and I think something with silk or another like shiny fiber would just add such a beautiful luster to the pattern. The shape of the droplet capelet and the slightly open stitch make it seem a bit like a tabard or chainmail armor. It's so beautifully simple, but I think because it encompasses your shoulders so securely, it adds this almost protective feel to me, which I love for that like fantasy aspect, like cozy armor. One that pops up in my Pinterest feed with relative frequency is Alice Starmore's Lapwing Collar. I think this design is just completely filled with magic. It's feathers without actually having feathers. It's beautiful. I've not been able to find digital downloads for her patterns, 
but it does look like she sells kits for all of her patterns, which you then get a print out of the pattern, or you can buy physical copies of her books. And she does have one book that has a similar design called The Raven Collar. I also do want to reference her Tudor Rose book as well because I am slightly in love with her Jane Seymour pattern. Again, for the cuff and the hem detailing as well as the incredible color work pattern across the entire thing. Like, oh, beautiful. So I realize every pattern I have referenced thus far is a paid pattern, none of which I'm affiliated with, but I just wanted to point out a few free patterns as well that are all of a kind of similar ilk where they are all sort of head and neck related. The first feels nice and rustic and has those historic connotations from its inspiration, Outlander. I generally really like chunky, versatile neckwear for fantasy characters. It just kind of makes sense for a travel garment that can double as a pillow or be used to obscure your face or just generally keep you warm. This one is just so satisfyingly chunky as well. The chainmail coif helmet and cowl, I think, kind of speaks for itself as far as fantasy elements go. <laughs> and I think it'd be super fun under a crown to get some Arthurian vibes going a la Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> This horn pattern just seems like a really fun tiefling addition. The pattern only covers the horns, which means you could add them to whatever you want, including adding them to an existing garment. You could also add decorations like ribbons and jewelry to suit your character's personality. Heck, knit them up in a dark charcoaly black, stick them on a green cloak, and you've got a low-key jester-inspired look. Finally, not really a pattern, but if you already have a base pattern that you love the fit of, you can always find a chart and apply it to your favorite pattern. There are a lot of medieval looking cross stitch charts on Pinterest, arguably of dubious legality, but you can also buy patterns for just the chart and create your own sort of unique medieval-y D&D inspired designs. This is only a teeny tiny selection of patterns out there, but it was fun looking for things that would be fun to wear out and about or just at the table. Let me know in the comments if you plan to try any of these or share other patterns that you think are great fantasy knits. I know there are heaps. I skipped over so much color work and like mitts and mittens and not to mention other accessories like dice bags and things like that. That is it for this video. If you like this video, you can check out my other videos. And if you really like this video, you can feel free to subscribe. I do have a Patreon which has D&D inspired knitting patterns if you are interested in checking out further patterns in my tiers. Or there are free patterns there that you can check out just by clicking on the link and looking at the public posts. And then you can download them. That's exciting, right? I hope you have a lovely week. Bye.